Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sunrise Extra on a Wednesday, and we have a very special guest joining us live this morning on Sunrise Extra, kind of the political figure for me growing up as a native Portlander. Former Mayor Bud Clark there on the right, his daughter Rachel there on the left. Thank you guys so much for getting up early with us. How are you doing, Bud? I'm doing just very well. I'm just relaxed here in my apartment and enjoying watching the world go around and the river go by. <laughs> Mayor yeah. Clark, you are a legend. Um, we mentioned before we hopped on the screen, uh, stream rather, that you still ride your bike. Do we have the correct information? <laughs> Yes, oh, no, I do, I do. I have a wonderful place to ride the bike down here by the river and, and the uh, trail on both the east side and the west bank. And, and uh, I have an e-bike, a go cycle. It's called a go cycle, anyway. <laughs> helps me get up the hills. Oh, I yeah. love that. There are many hills down here, so it's pretty good. Yeah. So a little background. We have, uh, this is a live show, Rachel and Bud. We have viewers uh, that we kind of watch chiming in and chatting and asking questions on Twitter, okay. on Facebook, on YouTube. And um, so just a little background because so many new people, as you know, mm -hmm. move to Oregon and move to Portland. Uh, they say 112 oh, people sure. every day. Yeah. So uh, Mayor Clark was the mayor in Portland from 1985 to 1992. You were a political outsider. You didn't have any experience when you ran, and uh, you you kind of swept it in that primary vote. And he was very known for riding his bike and his campaigns um, yeah. for the arts here in Portland. And um, tell us, how, what are you up to now? What have you what have you done since since a lot of people have seen you last? Well, I'm retired now, of course, and my daughter Rachel runs a goose in a way, and she's trying to figure out. A, what the, what the rules are going to be when the world comes back to yeah. whatever oh, normal is going to be in the future. So, And I uh, sit back and just enjoy the world go by. I, I used to ride my bike down here to the waterfront to uh, across from Ross Island to uh, look at the Heron Rookery, which is right across the river from my apartment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's uh, what brought me here to begin with when they built this building. And, and I said, I'd like to have an apartment right there. And, and I, I suddenly I found out I could afford it. So... Here I am, and uh, I get up and watch the birds every morning, and watch the fishy, fish, the fishermen going by in the river, and, and the river itself going by, and the, and the weather. I have a beautiful view of uh, the south towards the spaghetti factory, and uh, <laughs> I watch the clouds go by. You know, so it's, I, I enjoy it very much. And I have friends that call me, and my daughter keeps track of me all the time, and my son Jason calls and. And they uh, see if I'm still alive down here. Oh, you're alive and kicking. You look amazing. <laughs> Nina mentioned your original run for mayor. Can you take us back to election night, 1984? How surprised were you when you won? I mean, well, I, I, I really wasn't that surprised. I, <laughs> it was, it was the previous week, there was a parade in St. John's, and. Uh, the uh, former mayor was in the front of the parade, and I was in the back of the parade, and they weren't uh, giving the, the very good greetings to the mayor in the front of the parade, and they were cheering me in the back, and that's when he first realized he was in trouble. And then he came out with some negative advertising, which just worked against him, and uh, so I was pretty confident I was going to win. I was just surprised how early it came. It was We had a meeting downtown and a big party, and the party, by the time I got to the party, the party was really going very, very well. So anyway, uh, I, I wasn't that surprised, but I was very pleased. You know, You've lived I, in Portland. I had a good campaign. I had wonderful people that worked for me and came before. There was all, you know, I was in business for 25 years at that time, and I've been in business about 60 years now, so. What did anyway, you do? What's that? What did you do for business? Oh, I had the Goose Hollow Inn right up the street Oh, from okay, okay. Studio. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And Rachel, you now run that. How are things going? You guys have the best Reuben in town. You're right down the street here from KGW. We do. <laughs> we decided they take, taste better in person than they do in a to-go box. So we're, we're closed up for a little while and, um, and doing, doing really well, just taking care of things. We're refurbishing the, the big coolers and some beautiful woodwork that my dad, Bud, put in years and years ago. Um, kind of like little cabin in the city so it's been fun working down there while things are very quiet as you know we're just down the street from yeah. KGW and um, 
it's uh, just a waiting game. It's an interesting time period, but we've been taking advantage of the quiet to uh, get set up so when we return, we can serve you those awesome Rubens. Yeah, a lot of people doing kind of remodel jobs on their restaurants too. And, and I'm glad you answered that question because Amy Stoya, Stoya Nav on Facebook was asking, is the goose offering takeout? Her dad is missing his lunches. So there you go. <laughs> Not quite yet, but hopefully we'll be open soon. So, um, Bud, you've lived in Portland, I think my note says, since 1938. It obviously was a much, much different looking city back then. You are living, it sounds like, in the South Waterfront area, which just became our newest district, the sixth, <laughs> sixth quadrant, they're calling it, of South yeah, Portland. Yeah. What yeah. do you kind of think of all the changes, all the construction cranes, like how we have expanded? Yeah. It's actually, that's been a bigger surprise than my election. I've just been <laughs> amazed at the, the things that, uh, how things have changed in the last 10 years, especially. Mm -hmm. And that continues on. I'm going to lose my view here very shortly uh, because they're going to be building uh, two high rise buildings to the south of me and, and several uh, lower case buildings. Ah. It's a big development and it's going to take out part of my view, but that's all right. I'm mm -hmm. fine. I can still see the river and the rock <laughs> island. That's wonderful. But it's, it really has been amazing. It amazes me still the amount of money coming in. Yeah. I, I, I think we need Tom McCall back, you know, and say, come visit, don't stay. <laughs> Somebody he said a long time ago that uh, was still known when I was running for office. And we were in a real recession when I took office. And one of the reasons I ran for office was my son Jason was about ready to graduate from college, but he wasn't going to have a heck of a time finding a job because Oregon at that time under Reagan was in a real recession. Oh, excuse me, we couldn't sell lumber overseas because of high dollar and uh, people weren't building houses using our lumber uh, because of the high interest rates. So my thing was to put Portland back on the map, so to speak, and uh, get our economy going. And some people didn't like that. And, and now I wonder about it, too, because of all the development. But it's, it's make, making us a bigger city, which is good in that sense. You know, I'm looking down at my cheat sheet, What's Mayor that? Clark, and one of your key achievements also was a nationally recognized 12-point homeless plan. And boy, yeah. anybody who's been into downtown Portland lately, I mean, and not just downtown, it's all yeah. over the place. We have a crisis. Um, yeah. Would you weigh in and maybe give us uh, a little piece of advice as far as what you think we should be doing from here on out? Oh, boy, I wish I had the answer. That. It's difficult being a, a mayor at this time. Ted, he's got a tough job there. And... Uh, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, I just, I don't know the answer. The housing, what we need is low, low, low income, or, or low, you know, affordable housing. And that was Reggie Gafori's uh, theme for years, you know. And if we'd followed her direction more closely, uh, uh, we, we maybe wouldn't have had the problem that we do today. But this isn't just a Portland problem. This is all over the world, in a sense. I mean, uh, if people in England, they got, they call it people sleeping rough. and. I wish I had the answer, but uh, tolerance and kindness, and, and uh, at least in Europe, they do have uh, safety nets, you know, for people more than we do, and uh, and that's a tough one. Uh, everybody thinks, you know, the Republicans think that everybody can make a living just like that, but uh, it's it's tough going into business, going to doing anything. So uh, I wish I had an answer to it, but the thing is housing and and. Uh, Transition Projects is working very hard, along with many other agencies, to uh, uh, find housing. But that's the major problem, is finding places for people to stay and live mm -hmm. within their means mm -hmm. and within the means of the, of the government. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, I, I wish I had that answer. That's a big, big one. Yeah, you and everybody else. Um, we've know, been I, in fact, I wish that the guys that are sweeping out in the tents and so forth, I, I, I wish they'd be more neat about their stuff. I hate it when I see the garbage and even over on the other side of the river on the east bank as I go along the east bank mm -hmm. people uh, leaving messes of stuff mm -hmm. you know that you have to clean up and so mm -hmm. it's a huge problem. So we've been getting some um, great questions from our viewers. Um, we put out a call for questions for you. And um, Danielle wrote in and she said um, she would like to know 
what you would do if you were mayor right now during this COVID-19 situation. I mean, um, you know, we've, we've had to close businesses. We've had to close restaurants. Um, they're trying to get some, you know, uh, financial relief packages here locally from the Housing Bureau. Um, I mean, this would be, you know, a whole other problem to tackle. No, I, I think the government, I think they've done a fantastic job. I mean, this is another uh, kind of a miracle for me to see happen that you have everybody kicking in and, and following the rules and uh, staying at home and uh, uh, making it, I mean, trying to, in every way to stop the transmission of, of the uh, COVID uh, virus from one human being to another uh, with a face mask. I don't have my mask here right now, but uh, uh, that is a real phenomenon. I just wish that uh, hopefully it will, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, be a reaction when people wake up to the fact we have this global warming, which is going to create all sorts of uh, situations for the world, I I worry about the. I, I mean, I I worry about all the other things that I can't do anything about. <laughs> uh, uh, that's the way I worry. I guess I worry about whether the swallows have enough insects to eat. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Clark, we have another viewer question. Let's go ahead and put that up on the screen right now, and we'll okay. uh, ask. So Edmund says, "Why didn't he run for state office? Did you ever think oh. about that?" Oh, I have friends. You know, Barbara Roberts is a good friend of mine. I have a lot of good friends and that were and, and are in high office and. No, I'm not, I'm not a professional politician. I, <laughs> I saw a need uh, under the previous mayor before me, and uh, I, I said he could be beaten when all the other politicians said he couldn't be, and uh, I carried out and won and got the city of Portland back on track, I feel, and uh, that was enough for me. And I love the city, I love the state, and uh, I, I travel all over the state, and I'll continue to do that. And uh, love it, and have my kids here and family staying in Oregon and, and helping to build the state. So, you know, I I uh, I was not looking to a, I wasn't I wasn't trying to find a job when I ran for mayor. <laughs> or afterwards, I have a good tavern and, and a good people and, and lots of good friends, and that's good for me. Well, I may yeah. give you just a moment to. I don't know if you have an alarm going off that you want to. Um, I do. I'm going to go turn that okay, off. Okay, do I? Was going to ask your I daughter hear? Rachel a question. <laughs> um, Rachel, so what do okay. you remember from when your dad kind of decided to run for office? And I think Zoom will switch us to her view in just a second. But kind of what do you remember when he was becoming mayor? That must have been a crazy time. Well, it was, but I was a senior in high. A, a senior in high school, uh -huh. so for me it was just kind of a wild, uh, exciting thing that was happening, and um, it was a time when I learned a little bit about politics. I probably could have been a little more involved, and mm -hmm. um, that's a little message to my daughter, who's a senior, and <laughs> others like get involved um, because uh, it makes a difference. Um, it was I remember uh, canvassing the neighborhood, going up and down on the east side. Um, we had lived on the, we're living on the west side, but I canvassed on the east side and uh -huh. um, learned a lot about um, what it meant to volunteer and then watched my dad do that. Probably the biggest thing that I remember is just um, the modeling that my uh, father provided for going after something and something that you believe in and um, learning about some of the nasty politics of the time. The uh, Ivan C had run some really nasty radio ads and um, so we had to listen to some of those and then just watching my dad persevere and always stay positive and never give in to that negative side and then win was really exciting. He has such so, a personality. And then it was pretty cool, to, you know, as a senior to have your dad win and, and uh, kind of uh, enjoy that for a while. And then I got to leave town and go to college. So I um, wasn't here when he was mayor, which hmm. might have been good because I kind of <laughs> got into a little trouble. And so it was nice to, you know. <laughs> Have some distance from that. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask you real quick again about Goose Hollow? Because it is one of those places where you just completely feel comfortable when you walk in the front door. It has always kept that neighborhood vibe, the tavern there. Have you thought about what it's going to look like after all these coronavirus restrictions are lifted? Um, have you thought about any permanent changes that you may make with all the social distancing stuff? Oh, Brenda, that's uh, kept me up at night, and um, I've done so much research into what it's going to look like, and uh, so we're using that downtime to think about what that will be like. Um, I've got all sorts of uh, um, 
thoughts and um, plans, um, sketching and drawing and um, figuring out from uh, removing some of the tables on the deck, which you're probably familiar with, and putting them in the parking lot. If the OLCC will let me do that, oh. at least at the beginning during phase mm -hmm. one. As you know, there are different phases to the plan for reopening Oregon. And um, in phase one, uh, you have to have six feet between each mm -hmm. party. Mm -hmm. And um, that will really reduce the capacity for all of the restaurants, which yeah. is the biggest thing that all of us are um, struggling with at the Goose Hollow Inn, as you just mentioned, you know, people feel so comfortable there. And mm -hmm. we don't try to turn tables really fast. We, part of our business model is allowing people to hang out, relax, enjoy their time with each other. And um, with the reduction of the um, capacity, that's going to put a real strain on um, normally a time when we would be uh, making a lot of our income that carries us um, through the winter and through the, the tough months. So um, we're looking at that. We're looking at maybe, maybe a couple of menu items coming off to start with as we um, sort of ramp back up. Uh, the face masks, of course, one of the big um, things about the providing face masks, I see that uh, yesterday um, the governor included in the, the current v version, I know this draft is going to change. I'm on a committee with the health department that keeps uh, getting updates on it, and then I'm reading a lot. Um, but providing face masks for employees um, seems like kind of a big ask when there aren't even enough face masks in the hospitals and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm hearing is that the cloth ones are ineffective. And so that part of it kind of worries me. I see the need for providing face masks, but I also see a problem in the supply. Mm -hmm. And so, and then supply goes to another problem. You know, when we all open back up again, mm -hmm. are there going to be enough eggs? Um, mm -hmm. with the meat uh, crisis, um, things like that. Yeah. Um, it is definitely but huge. But I do problems. know that there's going to be enough beer, coffee, and liquor. <laughs> I've talked to all those providers, <laughs> and they need. are not running out. Yes. All we, need. <laughs> we are getting some so many wonderful comments. Uh, everybody, you know, I'm so excited to get that Reuben and their next beer from the Goose Hollow as well. I love um, on Facebook, I was just looking, Susan Sorrel Lovelace left a wonderful comment for you, bud. She says, I will never forget my years going to Portland State, riding TriMet from Southeast Portland, getting off at City Hall, and several early mornings, Bud Clark was standing out on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and he stopped me to talk about my plans. I was a single mom of two going to school to get my degree in education to better our lives. I will never forget his kind words to me. It's beautiful. Isn't oh, that great? That's very nice. That's very nice. Thank you. Do people recognize you? You still have the uh, quintessential mustache. Well, it's not as long, but uh, it, it, you know, you, I, I don't get haircuts too often, so it, it'll grow out a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Clark, people think of you as a true Portlander. Yeah. When you think of a true Portlander, what comes to mind for you? Well, I do. I, uh, I think of myself absolutely as a true Portlander. My grandmother had come here for the World's Fair in, in uh, 1905, and uh, I always looked at it. And I, and, and I was born in Idaho and came with my mother as a single parent in uh, 1938, and she worked for the Farm Security Administration. And uh, that was in the Terminal Sales Building. And at that time, the Terminal Sales Building and the Pacific Power Building were the two tallest buildings in town. And now look at it. You know, the, <laughs> the city has, has really changed extremely and, and uh, will continue to, I think. I, I always looked at Portland as kind of the, the capital of the Columbia Basin because the river that flows through here and the Columbia drains, what, six, seven states, you know. It comes from all, all, all the way from Yellowstone. Water comes past Portland, Oregon. So... Uh, I, I think we're, we're kind of the center of the region, even though we had gold rushers in both directions, and so that took quite a lot of attention away from Portland in the early days. You know, they had the gold rush in California and, and uh, left it, so there wasn't hardly anybody left in town, and they had another gold rush, and, and uh, Seattle got the advantage of that because of their location and so forth. But uh, we're still a viable and uh, a more livable space, I think, than a lot of other cities. But we've got problems, there's no doubt about it, and it always will have it. Yeah. People don't realize what, how much is going on in the city all the time with the uh, problems that you reach you every morning when you, the mayor, and you go to the office and, and find out what, 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 what is happening, you know, and it's, there's a lot happening. Yeah. we got to ask you about, you um, have an iconic image out there. Um, and I know we can show it right here, and it's called <laughs> Expose Yourself to Art. This thing was everywhere. 
Um, I mean, it's still famous here in the Rose City. What is the backstory to this? And how did this happen? What was the reaction? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you like it still being associated with yourself? Tell us yeah. the story. Well, you, uh, it's, 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 it's an interesting story because it did not start out to be a poster at all. My friend Mike Ryerson, who took the picture, he, he said it could be a poster. But it, it's, uh, believe it or not, I have a T-shirt on there and uh, underneath the coat. Okay, which good. Says, <laughs> which says, and it says, zap the clap. And oh, uh, the, the uh, neighborhood <laughs> association that, uh, that I belong to, the Northwest District Association, put me on the uh, venereal disease action board. <laughs> oh, met downtown boy. early in the morning. And uh, they, uh, Honoria was going through the high schools at that time, and they wanted to raise uh, the issue about that. And so they created these T-shirts that they wanted to sell to the high school students, which had a monster on it, like a uh, you know, I, uh, like a bug monster, and yeah. then it said flap. And the idea was to, and then it had the phone number, the venereal disease action on the back. And they were looking for some way to market this T-shirt. And so a friend of mine, Derek Reardon, had the idea of, of uh, flashing the statue down there. And I didn't even know what flashing was at that time. So, <laughs> so anyway, Mike Ryers and I went down there one Sunday morning and took several pictures. And this one picture was so funny that we put it in the north in, in the in the uh, uh, northwest neighbor uh, newspaper and asked for uh, you know for people to put a caption on it. Uh -huh. And we had like 350 entries under this little neighborhood newspaper. And uh, expose yourself to art was one of them. And there were three people that came up with that, and they got to split the $25 prize. <laughs> <laughs> and, then that was, and later, uh, uh, Mike said he th thought I'd make a poster. He had to borrow the $500, and finally was able to do the first printing. And before I ran for mayor, it sort of it had sold a quarter of a million copies, wow. 250,000 copies. Wow. And uh, he got all that. That was good. I, I turned the paper over to him. And so anyway, it's. It's an interesting story. There's so many stories, you know, that can come out of things that unanticipated results that you it's, uh, would never imagine. Exactly. So, anyway. <laughs> Life is I a hope. happy accident sometime. I totally agree. <laughs> Nina, aren't you glad you asked about that I story? I would have never oh, linked it to venereal goodness. disease. That is, that is for sure, but I love that. <laughs> but it I is love brilliant. knowing that detail. <laughs> yeah, it is brilliant. And uh, Mayor Clark, you are brilliant. It is a pleasure to talk to you. Um, please invite us back so we can catch up with you when this big old mess is over. Yeah. And we'd also like to say thanks to Rachel, and we'd love to visit as well Goose Hollow when everything yeah. settles in. Best of luck to you both. We appreciate yeah. you big time. Yeah. Thanks. All Thank right. you very much. Woo -hoo. Yeah. Oh, Woo -hoo. yes. Hey. <laughs> Wake there up, Marlon. It it's time to get up. <laughs> there you go. Woo -hoo. All right, that'll do it for us here on the stream. Have a great day, guys.